excited that uh, he was able to represent the refuge. Uh, but in that, uh, man, I'm just so excited to be back. And, and one of the things that, like I said, as pastors, we didn't have to worry because we know our people. And a lot of times people think it's the pastors or the music that determine what the church is. I'm here to tell you right now, you guys determine what this church is, and you do a great job, and we thank you that you love well. And with that being said, we're going to go over some things today that um, you may have heard this story before, but we're really going to look at it in some different points of views. A lot of times when we hear about Jesus or we read scripture, we gain knowledge and that's not a bad thing. Can I get an amen? amen? But something has to happen. There has to be something spiritually that happens to where the knowledge becomes a part of who you are in your heart. And a lot of times it's difficult. Sometimes we say, man, I need to learn more. I need to learn more. I need to learn. more. And this scripture shows us in this story and to preface this story, understand that Jesus is causing a ruckus. I know many of you in this room here are law-abiding and don't know what it means to cause a ruckus. <laughs> but Jesus was causing a ruckus in the right way. He was representing his father. And what happened is it began to contradict the law. You see what I'm saying? There's this law... And then Jesus shows up, and he is not necessarily speaking out of here as much as he is here, even though Jesus knows here better than them. And this is an occasion when the expert in the law came to test Jesus. Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25. It says, on one occasion, the expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life what is written in the law Jesus replied how do you read it and the man answered love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself Jesus says you've answered correctly do this and you will live I want to stop right there this guy's an expert in the law he knows all the laws, and the law of Moses was very extensive. And he knew the law. In fact, we could almost see that it, but he knew the law so well, it had been like he would be an attorney of the law. To understand the law and to, to, to be able to decipher it and, and to speak about it. And when he comes to Jesus, he asks this question. Hey, teacher, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And I love the response of Jesus. Well, you're, you're an expert in the law. You read the law. How do you interpret it? How do you read it? And I want to make a point right now. If you read scripture to justify your point of view, that's religion. Let me say that again. If you read scripture looking to support your point of view, that's religion. But if you go to scripture looking for God to speak, that's spirituality. That's Christianity. That's surrendering who you are to hear what God says. Now, understand we go, man, but it's loose interpretation. I can read something one day and then come back, you know, a year later, read it again. And it's something different. Once again, if the premise is the same, Lord, you speak then it's no longer just here, it's here. Now, if you want to justify your actions, if you want to justify the way you think, you can find that too, right? Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Heck yeah. Lord, if they did me wrong, you get them. And Jesus says, I can't. You say, why not, Lord? Because if I get them, I've got to get you. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not about me because you give me grace, give them judgment, religion. All because of division. Notice that when Jesus had said, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live, that would have been enough because what Jesus had found is that the man who was an expert in the law 
had read it enough to understand that all these laws pretty much hang in these two. Jesus even speaks later in saying all the laws of the prophet are bound up in these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. But the man, listen to this, verse 29. But the man wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus this question. And who is my neighbor? Religion. Here's the reason why. Because the law would determine who was good and who was bad. Right? Good or bad, according to the law. And what happens is, he begins to try to justify himself and saying, yes, I love God and I love my neighbor, but let's go deeper. Who's my neighbor? And he should have quit while he was ahead. <laughs> right? Because we all have these divisions when we think about our neighbor. We will be neighborly to those that we love. Amen. We'll be neighborly to those that love us back. But we are not going to be neighborly to those people. <laughs> I'm not going to be neighborly to the person that hurt me. I'm not going to be neighborly to the person that, that disrespects me. I'm not going to be neighborly to the person that doesn't agree with how I agree. And what happens is you get into religion. Division, division, this side, that side, up, down. And Jesus absolutely blows us up by giving this man a story. Here's the story. And I'm telling you, if the man blew up hearing this story, may we blow up hearing it too. Amen. In reply, Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side, ignored the man. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw the man that had been robbed and beaten, he passed by on the other side as well. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity upon him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, look after him and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Jesus said to the man, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. And the man went away, and I promise you, the man went away like a lot of us are today going, oof, where do I fit in this story? Let me explain. I don't know who the man was that got robbed. We don't learn from Scripture what type of person this was. We don't know if it was a Jew or, or somebody. We just know that he was left half dead, unconscious, beaten so bad they were able to strip him of his clothes and take him, left him for dead. And here comes a priest, one who knows God's law. And as he walks by, he sees the man and goes to the other side of the street and keeps walking. You may ask the question, why would he do that? My question, more importantly, is why would you do that? Oh, but I wouldn't. Well, let's see. Maybe as the priest went by, he saw that this person was less than. Maybe he saw this person probably deserved to be robbed in his mind. But whatever his mind said, whatever his justification was, it allowed him to get to the other side of the street and pass him by, and he felt righteous in doing so. Religion. A Levite. This is even greater than a priest. Approved by God to lead the people of Israel. Same thing. Walks by. Why? He had his reasons, and he justified himself, saying, this is why I don't help. We do this all the time too, ladies and gentlemen, right? Somebody cuts us off in traffic. There's going to be some consequences and repercussions. 
right? And it's usually in sign language, a horn honk, a couple of verbal uh, uh, praise, unpraiseworthy words. Can we say that? But then the Samaritan comes. Now, let me explain something to you. Here's what a Samaritan according to God's old law. Less than human. Disgusting, vile, illegal to talk to. When the Jews would see the Samaritans, they would put their hand like this so they didn't look at them. Absolutely disgusting. And here he comes down the street, sees the man half dead, and cannot help but help him. Because it says it took pity on him. Another word for pity is compassion. Another word in compassion is passion. He couldn't help it. He could not go by. And I'm sure that there was a lot of talk about this person. This person that was not worthy. This person that was disgusting. This person that was those people. But he didn't care. Because it was this compassion that moved him. It wasn't here. It was here. And he got off. He didn't care what people thought. And he began to tend to the man's wounds. The man was beaten so bad he never gained consciousness. But he stopped the bleeding, put him on his donkey, took him to the inn, stayed the night, bandaged him. Guy's probably still unconscious. Now, I want to say this. Notice that the Samaritan, as it was going, as he was going, was not looking for someone he could help. He was on his way to do something. You and I have an agenda every day. We got things to do. Understand, God does not consider our agenda. Has anybody ever understood that? We're like, Lord, I can fit you in an hour on Wednesday, maybe two hours at the most on Sunday, but lunch better be involved. <laughs> Other than that, that's all I can give you. When God is saying, no, if you're of me, I go with you wherever you go. I call you whenever I want to call you. You're obedient whenever I call you, even if it kind of adjusts your schedule. So look how cool this is. The Samaritan has to go handle his business goes to the innkeeper and says, hey, here's some money. Take care of them. I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll reimburse you for anything that you had to pay. And here's what I love about the innkeeper. You don't see the innkeeper going, ah, I don't have time. The innkeeper was, I saw you when you brought him in. I got you. I, too, have compassion on this person. I don't even know him. Man, imagine, ladies and gentlemen. If Christians would support each other in loving well, right? That it would be one of those that's like, hey, man, come here. I know this guy's struggling. Man, will you help me with him? Absolutely. How are you doing, man? You don't even know me. You don't even have to know me. Just know, man, I'm praying for you. I'll care for you. Are you hungry? Let me get you something to eat. Are you thirsty? Let me get you something to drink. You need a coat? Let me give you my coat. Nothing in return, right? And here's what we say. But I don't know if they're going to use that uh, correctly, right? If you give them money, they might go, you know, sure, religion. You can always find reasons why not. Now, hear me on this. Once again, the Samaritan was going about his way. So I'm not talking about we need to be people that go around going, okay, who needs my help? Believe me, there's plenty who will take it. And you'll drown, right? It has to be given by God, not when your head reacts, but when your heart reacts and you see it and you say, oh, Lord, let me help in any way I can. Now, remember, you can't be their savior. Can I get an amen? amen. Some of us in this room, like, man, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. And I'm like, quit trying. <laughs> wow, won't God get mad? God did not call you to replace him. Yeah. <laughs> Clap on that one. He grabbed that innkeeper, and the innkeeper said, I got it. He came back. They tended to the man. They don't know the man. They don't know the man's name. They don't know if he deserved it. They, I, they don't know anything. All they know is that oh, got me here, and I was listening to God through here. To me, I believe no matter who you are and where you come from, if you're truly in Christ 
and his love is within you, then you can't help but be about your father's business. Amen. Can't help it. Notice that the Samaritan who is despised by God in this story, Jesus tells the expert in the law which one is the one of God. And the expert in the law was like, the illegal dude. <laughs> the guy our law hates. The guy that we say God can't stand. And Jesus says, yeah, because it's not about how you think. It's about the heart of God. Amen. And the ability to sit there and say, man, I don't see separation when I look through the eyes of Jesus. Amen. Have you ever thought this? Maybe the Samaritan had compassion on him because he too has been beaten and left for dead? Amen. Man, listen to me. If you got deep scars here today, let those scars be beautiful. Amen. Don't hide them. Let them be beautiful. Let that be the compassion that comes out so that when you see people who've hurt like you used to hurt, you can't help but go to them and say, I used to be you. Man, I know a better way. I'm going to show you and I'm going to love you, but if all of a sudden you expect me to save you, Sorry, but it's him. Next thing you know, it's that love that binds us all. Think about that. That love that God has for us that many of us in this room, you still don't believe it. You still don't believe that he loves you right where you are. In fact, some of us in this room are like, oh, once I get better, then he'll love me. Right now, he will never love you any more than he does now. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. True love, not conditional love, because let's face it, everybody in this room, including myself, has done enough for God to say it's not worth loving you. But he can't help it. He doesn't agree with some of the things you and I do. There's a lot of people that, that I think God goes, hate your choices. Can't stand your posts. <laughs> and I loathe the way you drive and how you act. To where people go within God, why do you why do you even hang out with them? Because I love them. Yeah. I got people in my my kids. Oh, I love them with all my heart. Can't stand them sometimes. Just mmm. Well then why don't you kick them out? love them can't help it man why do you I mean we get this why do you help those people I love them I love them but they keep messing up if my love was contingent on their performance that would not be true love God's love for me is not contingent on my performance because I've already messed that up <laughs> yet he loves me so you need to understand this man, hear me on this please 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 Holy Spirit help us God's love for you is not based off your emotion. But I don't feel like he loves me. It has nothing to do with your feelings. He sent his son, died on the cross, because he loves you. Amen. So who are we to be? People that love well so much we no longer see division. Going back to what Miss Amber read Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, no circumcised or uncircumcised, no barbarian or Scythian, no slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. I love that scripture, and I love how it starts. Here, here in this place, here at the refuge, there is no division. Do you understand that? There is no addict, there is no normie. There is no biker. There is no bicycler. Right? There is no felon and there is no law abiding citizen because when we come in here, here, Christ is all. And in all. But you need to adopt that that you say here, right here and here, wherever I go in my home, in my workplace. Who I am here, there is no division. In me, it is Christ. He is on, is in all. And once again, imagine what God can do with the people that not only have that same heart, 
but we engage in that together. The strongest church is not determined by how much money they have, how many people are in the seats, or how plush the building is. The strongest churches are not the churches that have the best pastors and speakers, the best worship and music. No, the strongest churches are the people that go to that church, love and minister to each other. Yeah. Carry burdens for each other. Call each other out on our junk. Not a lot of plodding for that one. <laughs> right. To be able to sit there and say, you're mine and I'm yours. And if you struggle, I struggle. Let me come behind you and, and let me hold your arms up and understand this. Even if you're a person that's like, I don't want help. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. We will just be as annoying as possible. <laughs> Love you. Shut up. Okay. Never want to see you again. See you tomorrow. So I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're in this room and you think God gives up on you, Oh, he's persistent. So should God's people be. We should be persistent to love well, to be about our father's business. Pastor Allen, come forward. I want to tell you this story. We met an individual that was at this conference, and he did not know we were pastors. And so he comes up to us. And seeing how we look, I think Pastor Allen was the only one that was respectable. And uh, <laughs> he comes up and he starts talking about Jesus, man. He's like, let me tell you something, man. Jesus is really he's good, this and the other. And, and uh, his name was James. And we were like, amen, man, right on, right on. You could tell he was just pouring that love of Christ on us. And then he, he goes, man, what do y'all do? And I go, we're pastors. And he goes, what? Y'all are pastors? And then he... Kid you not, points at Brian and goes, even him? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. So at that point, he's like, man, I'm sorry, but we're like, no, that was awesome, dude. Keep loving well. And we started sharing. Listen to this. We started sharing to him about you. Amen. You need to hear this. We started sharing to him about you and the lives changed we weren't building ourselves up we were talking about what god was doing with his people and we were all sitting at a dinner and he got excited i got excited alan got excited brian got excited we started jumping up and down and high-fiving talking about god moving to the point we became a disturbance <laughs> James blessed us because of his zeal, his love for that compassion for those who are hurting. He didn't care. He did, there was no division, and it, and it was a beautiful thing, and it's one of the things that we go, we need to be that here. We need to be that to where we're arm in arm with each other. We're high-fiving going, hey, man, I found somebody that's hurt. Let's get them. But they hate us even more. But they don't like us even more. Let me even go a little bit further. If you were going down the street and you see somebody wearing a Biden shirt that says, take the guns, death to Texas, yet they were hurting, you better not see that shirt. You better see the creation of God that deserves our love. Amen. That's who we are. That's what God has called us to be. And we now have an opportunity to live it, not here, but in here, out there. Amen. Amen. That's right. Let's we'll stand together. That man in the <laughs> I invite you to join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father God, that we might be one as you and the Father are one. God, that we would love each other as, as the Father loved Jesus, and Jesus loved the Father, and in turn loved us. That that love would be demonstrated between us, amongst us, from us. And God, that in that your kingdom would be glorified. That we would be the testimony. That they would know we were Christians. That they would know that we were of the way. That they would know that we were followers of the one living God by our love, one for another. God, let us be that Samaritan and doesn't see color and doesn't see uh, politics and doesn't see financial status, doesn't see anything but the love you had for that man that was demonstrated in his life. Accomplish that in us. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. In this place, God, in agreement with heaven. So with that, God, would you bless and keep this your people. God, would you cause your face to shine upon them, each of them and all of them. Be gracious to them. Let your countenance be upon them as well. God, the peace of your Holy Spirit be established in their lives. We declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.